Hello everybody and welcome to another quick Dwarf Fortress tutorial. In this video we're going to be covering the Justice System, the Captain of the Guard, the Dungeon Master, and the Hammerer. Also, the Sheriff, which is the Captain of the Guard but with a different name. Essentially, what these jobs allow you to do is it gives you access to this tab in uh, the Nobles area called the Justice Justice System and all of these tabs. I'm going to walk through the UI, explain what they all mean and what they do, and then I'm going to jump to a different fort where I'm going to show you some of this UI in action and kind of what it can cause and what to look for. So the first thing I want to cover is the Nobles associated with the Justice System. The first one starts off as the sheriff when you have a, uh, before you have a mayor, and then becomes the captain of the guard. Then once you uh, acquire nobles and royals, uh, from there you'll get the dungeon master and the hammerer. Now, uh, although the hammerer shows up when you get a mayor. Now, essentially what these jobs do is uh, you assign a dwarf to them. This is Mebzith, our captain of the guard. Uh, you assign them a, uh, a, they require a study, which is an office zone. They require a bedroom, just like any normal dwarf, and a dining hall. So for this particular dwarf, uh, they have a study study right here, which includes a table, uh, two uh, cabinets, and then the, the the weapon rack and armor stand. And then they have a dining room, which is just over here. It says it's overlapping because it's overlapping with some of these bedrooms because I was lazy. And then over here is their bedroom. Now, they require these specific buildings in order to function properly. If you do not provide these buildings for them, they will not be able to function. They don't need the bedroom, but they do at the very minimum need an office. Uh, and then the dining hall just makes them happy. I think they uh, actually cover meetings in, in the dining hall. Now, the uh, hammerer doesn't need anything specific. But the Dungeon Master does. Now, you might wonder to yourself, what do these particular roles do? So, the Captain of the Guard is kind of, or the Sheriff earlier in the game, is kind of like the fact, the Fortress Police. Uh, when crimes are committed, and crimes are things like uh, somebody tries to steal an artifact, or a uh, dwarf tantrums and breaks something, or somebody got into a fight in the tavern and kicked somebody in the forehead and their nose got knocked off, those kinds of events um, are then brought to the office of the Captain of the Guard. Then they report those events events to the captain of the guard and then they show up here in the justice screen now in order for the justice screen to work and the captain of the guard to be able to function properly uh, you need some prison cells if a crime is reported and it shows up in the open cases section of the justice screen and there's witnesses and you click accept which we'll cover in a little bit uh, and you don't have a prison set up the captain of the guard over here will simply go and beat the ever-living crap out of the person until they keel over now <laughs> The uh, w within this screen here, if we scroll through, you can see uh, total number of desired uh, cages and whatnot in the dungeon. So 12 of 13. This is based off of population. Every 10 dwarves, you'll need one cage or chain. Our current prison setup is right here, and I've just increased the size of it, and I'm going to really quickly designate this whole area as a prison and show you how this works. So I've got cages down here, and then I've got ropes and more cages and more ropes, and they're all in kind of a big open zone. If I click Dungeon, and I click and drag over this entire zone, it'll complete, and then uh, as they construct this stuff, if I go back over here into the Fortress Guard, 13 of 13, we've got exactly what we need, which means now my Captain of the Guard and Hammer won't get upset Un unhappy moods underneath the fortress guard screen. You can also appoint uh, dwarves to a militia captain's squad if for some reason you have a very crime-heavy fortress and they need a lot of help. Now, uh, the jobs that, they, that the different members of this do is the captain of the guard takes crime reports and will take dwarves to prison, carry out beatings, and will also um, uh, take care of the prisoners in prison. However, um, if this is getting too much or if you have too large of a fortress, then I recommend adding in a dungeon master. The dungeon master will also take crime reports and will help kind of lift some of the work off of the captain of the guard. And alternatively, if you have a very crime-heavy fortress, I recommend adding in a hammerer. Now, the thing about the hammerer is the hammerer does one job, and that is they carry out the beatings. So, say perhaps your captain of the guard is in a military squad and training a lot, and very, very strong. Maybe you don't want your captain of the guard walking over and one-shotting your wrist into pieces because he punched him so hard in the face. What you really want is you want weak Jimbo number 44, the hammerer over here, with uh, the weakest weapon you have in the fortress, to walk over and lightly slap them a couple of times so they don't die, but they get the... Get so that they get the idea. Um, and then from there, you'll see open cases. And for this part of the tutorial, I'm going to jump over to a different fortress that is significantly more active in, uh, let's just say, crimes. So now, as you can see, we are in the Fortress of Waterlungs, which is a fortress I'm currently streaming. This fortress, if I go through, we have all of these unsolved crimes. Now, these can be one of two situations. These can be a 
uh, an attempted uh, s- somebody trying to steal something from the fortress, this could be somebody committing a crime and it not getting reported correctly. In the case of all of these, these were all um, not reported correctly. So we don't have any witnesses because they were reported before uh, my captain of the guard was fully equipped to actually uh, deal with uh, problem dwarves. They can also become unsolvable um, if the perpetrator gets killed. So keep that in mind. Now, the part of this system that is half built is the intelligence section. This section over here for conspiracies. Now, I, I will jump over to a different save in a little bit that has some active conspiracies. And uh, this is why this tutorial has taken so long to make is because I, I need like four different saves to actually show you everything. But essentially, uh, we have these open cases. Now, open cases are uh, recently reported crimes. Um, if we, for some reason, had uh, uh, no witnesses, we can go through and we can interrogate anybody in the fortress. So if us, the player, witnessed a fight happening and it didn't get properly reported, I can go and interrogate somebody who would have witnessed that fight, and hopefully that will give us some more information as to who did the, the violence. Now, if you scroll down, you can even interrogate a goat, if you wish. Although, I will admit... Um, while this does train, uh, your goat's, um, or, or not your goat, your captain of the guard's speaking ability, it will not, uh, give you much chance of finding the perpetrator. So I'm going to, uh, interrogate, uh, two dwarves here, and then I will show you the result in the intelligence screen. Now, as this dwarf gets dragged off to be interrogated, something that is also worth noting is if you have public taverns, it might not be a bad idea to just interrogate random visitors that show up. Now that the interrogation is complete and the dwarf has been brought to the office to be interrogated, we can then go back into the noble screen to see the results. So if we go to the justice screen, we can go to intelligence and we can look at this interrogation report. And if I click on it, it says uh, that we met with the subject on behalf and the uh, subject... Uh, 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 appealed to the subject's belief in truth, and the subject valued honesty and despite being intellectually stubborn. And the subject used uh, Iton tattooed stake as an alias in the past. So in the past, this dwarf has actually lied about who they are, and we just learned a little bit of information about this dwarf. Of course, this doesn't expose any plots or organizations, but it does give us an actor's list. They haven't committed any crimes, so we know that they are not involved. Now, this system can get quite interesting when you start interrogating uh, people that are trying to steal artifacts, because they will give you information like, oh, this person from an unknown in civilization or unknown entity uh, plotted to steal this artifact. Now, this is where this gets clunky because this system is half built. This system is supposed to be part of the uh, villains and uh, treachery systems in Dwarf Fortress. And the problem with uh, this is this system is uh, half of a patch. Uh, we got part of this system uh, so that Zack and Tarn Adams could go work on the uh, Steam version that you're seeing now. Um, so these features have actually been in previous versions of the game, obviously with the older UI, but uh, it's, it's unfinished. It is impossible to complete a lot of the uh, plots that you'll get strewed out. However, you can still get some really interesting bits of lore out of it, so it is still worth paying attention to this system. And some other reasons why you want to pay attention to this system is, as you can see, we have a bunch of dwarves in prison here. Um, if I look at them, this person, this dwarf right here feels uh, guilty after being confined. Uh, this dwarf over here, actually, this militia captain, Lolar, actually feels repentant after being confined, meaning this is actively improving their mental health uh, being in prison. You can also make extremely nice prison cells for your dwarves, and this will incredibly increase greatly increase the happiness of the dwarves. If you have something like a vampire in your fortress and you see them walk in your fortress and they look odd and you're very suspicious of them and you interview them, they might just admit to being a vampire and then you can put them in prison and seal off the door permanently. Also, little dwarves like this little child here, what, it's Frank, is actually feeling sympathy after bringing somebody water. So this dwarf is getting positive moves from it. From it. Uh, this dwarf over here is also repentant after being confined and was incredibly stressed beforehand and was, like, tantruming a whole lot and causing problems in the fortress. So a reason to very much take part in this system of prisons is it can actually improve the overall health of your fortress. I see some people saying, oh, I ignore it because uh, if you ignore the noble's demands up here, and uh, let's say I fail to make ballista arrows, again, some dwarves might get thrown in prison but a, per a percentage of them will actually improve in mental stability-wise while they're in prison, unlike real life. So largely, I would say that the disorderly conduct under open cases is definitely something you want to pay attention to. If you have an open case, it'll show up like this, where it says, uh, this dwarf, JKRT, uh, committed disorderly conduct, and there was seven witnesses. I could interrogate JTRT and get their side of the story first, or I could just simply convict them. Once we convict them, it states that they have been convicted, and then uh, from my from my 
knowledge, it should just go directly into closed cases here. Probably down at the bottom of the list, if I had to guess, or nope, at the top of the list. From looks of things, I need to unpause the game ever so slightly, repause it, and jump back over to closed cases. That eh, hasn't popped up yet. They'll get it in there. And then over here we have uh, cold cases, which are usually just somebody died before uh, they could possibly um, be convicted. Now you can still convict dwarves within cold cases, and you can also interrogate dwarves. And if you can find a witness, you can convict them, which. Any dwarf that values the law that was uh, involved in that case, or any dwarf who's tangentially involved or related, will get happy thoughts about the fact that, well, this dwarf, Fallout Rain here, uh, injured Jaden, and uh, so now all of Jaden's family are, oh, yes, and they're happy. And if Jaden is still alive in the fortress, then that dwarf will be happy as well. Um, over here, underneath the Fortress Guard, once again, lists the Fortress Guard. Everybody who's ever been convicted in the Fortress, and you can select and see what they've been convicted of. And then lastly, over here, under Intelligence. So let's say we, we interrogated this human, uh, Saspa, the human mercenary. Now, uh, we made intimidating remarks. In the late winter of 255, an unidentified creature plotted to assassinate an unidentified creature in order, under the influence of unidentified creature via subject. So this is something that's completely unrelated to us. However, in, uh, in 252, the subject plotted to infiltrate Chunky Orb, that is us in order to steal treasures and prepare a coup under the influence of an unidentified creature. Now, we can theoretically figure out who this unidentified creature is if we keep interrogating people. In fact, there was one time in a fortress I was able to find the unidentified creature, and it just straight up gave me their name. However, the prepare a coup portion is unfinished, so that will never actually happen. Same with certain artifacts getting stolen. It's very difficult to get the artifacts back. A lot of this, a lot of the artifact theft stuff is primarily an adventure mode feature where you're kind of intended to go find the artifact in adventure mode and then bring it back. Or, and uh, the coup stuff, that is part of Villains Part 2. If you see assassination attempts talked about, that is Villains Part 2. If you see uh, various other things uh, that it seems like you can't interact with or nothing ever happens, then that is also Villains Part 2, generally. Which is an upcoming update that'll be out probably around the same time as Adventure Mode, if I had to guess. So that's kind of my overview slash tutorial discussion talk about uh, for the uh, justice system in Dwarf Fortress. If this video was helpful to you, there's a whole lot of playlists on this channel and of uh, tutorials and things, and I've been a little bit of a slacker recently uh, getting tutorials done because, frankly, I've just been I've been working on other things and just trying to keep my head stable. So if, if you want me to do more tutorials and continue to pick up where I left off over time, uh, leave me a comment down beneath this video and let me know. I would love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see See you in the next one.